This week, I do a spin rooney in race A. We see the lunge of the century in race B. And Chelsea decides to test out the penalty system in race C. Hello everyone and welcome once again to the Gran Turismo Weekly Race Guide. It's 2022, it's week 14 and we have, I think, a first or it's happened very rarely in terms of the details this week in races. Specifically race B and C but we'll get to that shortly because we're here with race A. We're at Suzuka East and we are in the famous AE86. We are going drifting here boys and girls so make sure you get your drifting shoes on. Let's have a look at the race details then. We're racing six laps here at Suzuka East. It's a grid start. You will need traction control, comfort medium tires, tires one fuel, tires one tire wear. Bop is fixed. Just go out and get the car and go out and race. Now, I don't believe the tuning settings while you can make the car customized is having any impact because I followed a ghost. We had a wing and we were doing the exact same thing. So don't worry about that. Now, timestamps are in the background as well. If there's any particular part of this video you are after, Otherwise, let's jump to that race then and let's have a look at me becoming the new... Actually, I won't become the new DK. I do just go out and race. We are then at the start. And nobody's customized the car in this race. We're starting P8. We've got Arkies there. Check out Arkies on YouTube, of course. As we get ready with the start. Traction control on one. Off we go. You're going to see it just in action there. And I just switched it off just before I change gear. Although that doesn't matter now in GT7. So I'm not really sure why I'm telling you that. Now, Gracia comes across here. So I can't really do anything because if I go left, I'm going to hit them. So I'm sort of in a bit of no man's land here. So I do break early here. And then they break quite quite a bit sharper than I expected. Slight tap there into turn one. But uh, hey, they saved it. We carry on as if the racing was normal, which it was. I don't know why I even said that. Anyway, side by side. Here we go in towards turn two then. Uh, slight contact there, but we're still on the outside here. Now on the inside, they just turn in too early there. Absolutely bounces there. And Arkies gives us a nice little bumper draft. And uh, yeah, we're gaining a position. So we're moving up the field already. Lots of cars will we take up ahead. Let's see what we can do in towards this long, long right hander here. Now, the big thing with this car and this circuit is you only need third and fourth gear. You do not need any other gears. Uh, any other gear is just not necessary as we break quite sharply there. We only do that because we took a little bit of a wrong line, but the lap guide will explain that shortly. So we are now in this battle. We've got the leader going far to the right. In fact, we've got some people going left, some people going right here. Not sure where I'm going. I'm staying in the middle. I'll be the different one as we head down towards turn one again. What's going to happen here? So somebody's on the inside of somebody there. I don't know what's going on up ahead as we head towards turn one, then in towards the breaking zone. We go. We break a bit earlier here because we had slipstream. I'm not sure how it affects. So oh, somebody's slightly off there. Who is that? Slightly off in the distance. They're on the outside now. A little bit of contact. Oh, we've all just stopped. And Arky's about to get a free position. Congratulations, Arky's. Free position for you. We all just stopped dead in our tracks. Uh, and that is a bit of a theme, actually, this week, as you will see shortly. But we're not out of it yet. As up ahead, somebody was going completely sideways. In fact, they've gone off there. We've got one person off. We've got Tom there on the outside. Now going to be inside, but we're looking to follow Arky's through here. Tom being very safe there, allowing Arky's on the outside. So we're thinking, okay, I'll follow through. Midnight Panther just off in the distance then. In towards this left-hander we go. Arkies gets it all sorts of wrong. I have to back out of this. Unfortunately, Tom hits us here and uh, spins us around. Now, obviously, that was a mistake, as you will quite clearly see. Tom waits up for us. This is amazing sportsmanship. And just for that alone, you are my driver of the week, Tom. And uh, Tom actually came onto YouTube and said, sorry for the punt. Uh, I did see the comment. I just, I'm editing it at the moment, so I couldn't respond. But so, yeah, shout out to you. Now, turn one at breaking zone. We get straight into this. That piece of tarmac on the left-hand side. Literally, that is your brake marker. Get as close to that as you can. Fourth gear. You sort of want to clip the apex and go out. And then you change down to third here as we see somebody off there. So then it's third gear for the rest of the lap. This is it. You stay in third gear. Now, it's all about... Suzuki East is all about balancing the car. So you might dab the brake a little bit, but it's all about throttle control more than braking. So you want to try and not hit the brake. Just come off the throttle, let the car roll through the corners where it's possible. Turn the car, notice I'm up and down that throttle all the time, in towards this right-hander. In we go, and I just dab the brake there a little bit, because I just had a tiny bit too much speed. 
as we continue on now into this left you want to keep this tied to the normal for this left because you want a better line for the the right so that's what i do here and look at that i don't have to break at all and as i come through there we have a cone hitting us of course uh, but as we come through here you notice how i just didn't break because i had a better line you carry so much more speed if you do that you don't want to drift at the exit like i did but even so that is how you do that we I mean, would have had the faster slap if i didn't drift this teaches a pleb. Right, let's advance further on. Let's get into this battle. We've got Grace here and uh, D DJR underscore JB. We go in towards this right-hander then. What's going to happen here? They're just racing as normal. And, uh, oh, I get a little bit of a run here. So I'm going to try around the outside. Uh, quite a hard move to pull off. But Grace here breaks in the corner. It gives us an opportunity here. And as we come through here, there's enough room on the exit there. Side-by-side -side racing. Up into P8. So that's a good move in my opinion. As we're now going to look at the French driver up ahead. Well, we are. We're just going to fast forward a little bit first. Just so we can catch up there. So in towards the braking zone again. Notice I was looking for that tarmac. And it's all about bouncing the car into this brake zone. It will brake fairly okay. So you don't need to worry about that. Somebody was off in the distance there. Not sure who that was. Um, but here we go. The race with the French driver. DJR underscore JB. So in towards the left we go. Again, notice I'm keeping it left here. I'm trying to get the run through the route. A lot of people go too aggressive into that first left. And this is what happens. A little bit of contact due to the oversteer. But uh, yeah, we carry on through there. That isn't our fault in the slightest. And we've just got P6 up ahead. The cursed position is in our grasp. It is indeed. So, Boyo, what are we going to do here? So, Boyo defends in towards turn one. I was expecting him to go a little bit deep, but they didn't. Which was uh, kind of interesting and well played by you, Boyo. As we leave that corner then. I was expecting then you to go too aggressive into this left-hander, as most people do. You went a little bit too aggressive, uh, and I went a little bit as well, because I had to really saw the car down there, and Boyo actually gets a little bit of an advantage. We get a bit of momentum, then we're looking round the outside, round the outside. Not going to quite work here. Carried a little bit too much speed here. You have to back out of that and try and fight another day here. A couple of corners to go then, as Boyo goes far to the left-hand side of the circuit. Again, remember, you want a tight line here as much as you can. I actually break a little bit this time try and get that but i'm not as tight as boyo so boyo's gonna get a better run through this corner notice the better line just by being that little bit further left now we try and carry some speed through the corner we get a little bit drifty unfortunately we're not getting the cursed position today so well played boyo with that one uh, a little bit disappointed i get the rest of the race but accidents do happen and again shout out to tom for the sportsmanship there shown and yeah driver of the week this week just for that sportsmanship that's it for race a let's jump to race b Welcome then to Deep Forest Raceway for Race B. Now, this one is actually a good race, to be fair. However, I do have a bit of a concern with it, and I'll talk about that shortly. Now, you can see we're in Group 3 machinery. This is where it gets unique, because both Race B and C are Group 3. Has that ever happened before? Maybe once in GT Sport, maybe. But it's very unusual, so kind of interesting to see what the thought process is behind this. We'll never know, or maybe we'll find out soon. Who knows? Let's jump to those race details then. We're racing five laps here at Deep Forest. It's a rolling start, and we are on racing hard tyres. Now, critically, times two fuel, but times ten tyre wear with bot being fixed. Now, it's that tyre wear I have a bit of a concern with, because race B is normally the sprint race. If you make it times ten tyre wear, and you've seen the Audi in the background as well, it makes the undrivable cars pointless to race in. While if it's lower tyre wear, at least they might be able to race for some part of it. Times ten tyre wear, by the end of the race, they're going to be ruined. Now, you will see that during the race. This is why I picked the Peugeot RTZ. Livery by Shelty, of course. What an absolute legend he is, being a part of TCR. Um, so, the RTZ had a very stable car. That's why I picked it. I would recommend you pick a stable car. Let's jump to that race. Let's have a look at exactly what happened, as well as a lap guide as well. This one is a good one. We are then at the start in our Peugeot RTZ. Thank you again, Shelty. So, mainly RTZ in here. There's an Audi R8. <laughs> Very brave decision for this track in particular. We know how undrivable that is. Uh, there's a Nissan GTR in here. There's a couple of others. I think there's a Ferrari. Um, but Oh, and an Evo in P1 as well. But, as I said, the RCZ very stable car is the one I would go for. If you have another stable car that you've got, bear in mind I don't own all the cars yet, so I can't tell you exactly what is the most stable thing, um, go for that car. Stable or oh, stability is key for this race. As we get right close up there of the Peugeot RCZ. Once again, the rolling starts are atrocious, but we'll be talking about that in race C in particular. Here we go then. Deep Forest Raceway. Five laps. Times 10 tire wear. You got to be careful there. Times two fuel. Um, and here we go. So the Supra up ahead has an atrocious start here. The Castrol GC500 Supra 
but in towards the braking zone we go. And this is going to be a lap guide as well. So turn one, the start of the curb or the 100 meter board. You, you break just before the 100 meter, just after the start of the curb. Use both of those as your reference as you come into this corner. Obviously, we're not going quite as quick as we normally are because it's the start of the race. Now, Adi R8 getting a little bit wrong here. So going up the hill. That you can do this first part flat. However, one thing I would suggest is just lifting a tiny bit for this right-hander. Clip the curb on the inside. Now, as you get towards this point, I brake just as the grass changes the concrete on the left-hand side. It's a sharp, quick brake just so I can slow the car down enough. And I want to sort of use the left-hand side of the curb a little bit here. Not quite as much as the Audi does there. Now, as I come into this corner, I, I straight line it. I brake again. Accelerate through the corner. Now, as you head towards this right-hander, the end of the curb, just after that disappears off your screen, that is when you're then braking for this corner. And you want to keep it tight. Um, there is a... You used to do this as a V-shape, but it's better to keep it tight and then drive through the corner. Be careful about running too wide on the exit there. If you go too much on the green stuff, you will get a penalty. Now, for this left-hander, people go way too aggressive for this corner. Brake early where the curb is the most indented into the circuit or protrusive circuit. Brake early and then turn and accelerate through the corner. Going too aggressive here, you're going to brake over a crest of the hill and it's going to cause the car to oversteer. This left-hander, I'm using this concrete bit here. So there's two pieces of concrete lines there with the tarmac. It's basically a bridge. Um, somewhere in there, you are then going to break. Now, be careful of oversteer on this corner. It's very common to get oversteer there, as you saw with the Audi a little bit, as we then enter the tunnel. I will tell you a little bit of a trick with the tunnel later on, um, because you can see better with one simple trick. Anyway, we continue on towards the last corner as we do the reverse motor maneuver on the Supra. In towards the braking zone we go. And it's the 100 meter board. You're braking just before the 100 meter board here. Um, you can see I've just started the brakes now and I will make the corner. Uh, so look out for that 100 meter board. I sometimes make the mistake of braking at the wrong board. Do keep an eye on it. As we see, oops, somebody going backwards there. That's never good, but hey, we'll take those positions. So we gain another position here, or defend it at least. I just checked the fuel here because I was a bit unsure whether the 10 times 10 was fuel or tires. The editing afterwards, it's very easy to know. Uh, but we continue on through there, the left-hander, and the Audi not really catching up to me at this moment in time. Now Slipstream's coming into play. They go towards the right side. They've made their choice here. So I'm going to defend this. In towards the breaking zone, as I say, just below 100 meters, just after the curb starts there. And we get it stopped beautifully and accelerate through the corner. Now there's a big group of cars up ahead. Let's advance that big group of cars. So we've got a Mazda, we've got a GTR, we've got the Peugeot in front of us, of course. And there's another Peugeot in front of them. In fact, there's two Peugeots in front of them. So lots of cars here, lots of racing happening. As we go to this left, again, somebody else going way too aggressive into that corner. It's such a common mistake to do uh, because in the old Gran Turismo, that's what you did. You went very aggressive into it. You don't do that anymore. Now, traction control kicked in on that GTR. It forced them to just basically have no power. So I hit them. The Peugeot RCZ behind hits me. But we carry on racing. So as I say, common theme. That's happened twice now in two races. Let's see if it happens in the third. Heading down towards this braking zone. I was expecting some form of carnage potentially. I'm sort of sat in the middle of the road here to avoid the RCZ diving down the inside. Um, but we keep it fine here now. The GTR goes around the outside. I go on the inside of the Mazda. The Mazda loses two positions in one go. Now the GTR... We're expecting this to be very, very, very quick in a straight line. Much quicker than the RCZ. However, you're noticing it's not really pulling away here. Now, I look out, but I can't get past. I pull back in. I'm going to look out and can't really do much. And then I'm thinking again, just to show my nose. And showing my nose worked out a treat here because they get the braking all sorts of wrong. And we're going to get that position. The master went too deep as well. And unfortunately, the GTR is actually going to leave the race. Now, up ahead. We have our driver of the week. I'm pretty sure it was the driver of the week last week. It's Dav1969. As we head down in towards the break-in zone, then they go defensive there. It's all good stuff. RCZ trying around the outside behind me as well of Leon. I'm in a French sandwich here. It's a baguette. We are a baguette. We are officially a baguette at this moment in time. Look at that. Right, so they give me just enough room on the inside there. So I'm going to stick my nose in and we're going to go for the drag race all the way towards turn one. As you can see, the advantage of just having that inside line, even though it's a tiny bit, when you're doing your time trial app, make sure you do take that inside line. It'll give you a temp for two. It was the breaking zone. We go, and looks like we're getting the job done. And there's another group of cars up ahead. We've got a Porsche in that one. We have a Ferrari. Uh, McLaren is that? I can't tell. Lots of uh, different cars here as we head into this corner again where people do go aggressive. Not so much this. Oh, well, actually, one did. Ferrari's gone. F for that Ferrari. Technically, it is F for Ferrari, isn't it? Anyway. Oh, they catch you, actually. They're behind me. That's a catch. I thought they're gone. My word. That's a catch and a half. Anyway, we're in P8. We can see the cursed one up ahead. They've got a penalty there. Having the curse, of course. Um, let's see what we can do. 
Uh, as they go left, so we're going to go right here. That's that position gained. E6 just up ahead in towards the breaking zone we go. Now, I break just at the right point here. They break a tiny bit early, so it catches me out just a tad. But we continue on through the corner. But I really wanted to overtake them on the straight anyway. Because I wanted just a boost on the straight to get past and then try and aim for that P5 position. So that's what we're going to do. Slipstream right behind them here. Let's see the power of the slipstream here. You can see that the before when the Audi R8 was in it, they didn't get much of a boost. Look at the boost we get here. We know that Audi R8 is slow. I'm right to confirm Audi is a bad manufacturer at the moment. In towards left hand, there we go. We break it just on point here. Look at this beautifully made corner. And up into P6 then with Andre the Giant. No, it's not Andre the Giant up ahead. But they are in a Porsche. Not that that matters. I'm not sure why I said that. Anyway, through we go. And they get a bit of oversteer there on that left hand. I'd say that's a very common thing to happen. Now, you saw the trick there. If you're in the tunnel, look behind you and look in front again. And the lighting will instantly sort itself out. Little trick for you there. Do that. Uh, you can look behind and look in front and it changes completely. Such a good tip. Anyway, in towards the braking zone we go. We've got the job done. However, the Porsche brakes way, way too late. Slight tap on the rear, but they try and go for the avoiding. We hear the metal crash. Fair play for avoiding me there, Andre. Absolute fair, fair, fair play. You could have hit me in the rear then to save yourself. You didn't. That is superb, superb driving. So shout out to you as well. Uh, but we're going to finish in P5. Not too bad from really the back of the grid. And uh, yeah, we'll take those kind of races. Lots of action. I think this will be the best race of the week when we look at race C. Um, I really do. But yeah, you can have some good races here. Absolutely. But uh, we'll look at race C because people will think that is a favorite. And I'll show you. So then we get Cruncher down at the bottom. So, you know, who can race clean? Let's jump to race C then. And let's talk about that a little bit more. Welcome to Spa Francorchamps for race C. Uh, I always do that. Sorry for those that are new to the channel. Always do that. Uh, we are in group three again, as I've already explained. And I've chose a different car this time. You can see I'm driving the McLaren in the background just because I didn't want to do the RCZ twice. The RCZ is perfectly capable here. However, let's have a look at the race details and explain why potentially you might want to pick something else. Eight laps here at Spa. It's a rolling start, which is dreadful. Oh my word, we'll talk about that in a second. Racing hard tyres. Times seven of fuel. That's the critical part. Times 10 tyre wear and bop is on. So first up, as I said, I chose the McLaren. Shout out to TCR and score double D72 for delivery. Another TCR member, if you do want to join TCR, check out the description and we'll look at getting you in. Anybody can join. Doesn't matter your driver skill. The only critical thing you need to do or be is a clean racer, a respectful racer and a trustworthy one as well. Right, let's jump to this race then and we'll talk about the strategy in a little bit more detail because what was in my head at the time was right and Shelty proved it. Right, here we are at the start. So you see Shelty is in a Mazda RX Vision GT3. I instantly knew that Shelty knew it was a fuel race. Now, I anticipated it. Now, always turn your fuel map to six at the start when that grid's on. It just saves a tiny bit of fuel, especially as the AI is controlling your car. It doesn't control it very well, and you don't want the AI to use your fuel. It's your fuel. Why let somebody else use your fuel? You wouldn't do that, IRL, would you? Right. Anyway, let's get ready for the racing then. So, rolling start. Atrocious. I don't know who plans the rolling starts here, but they really need to change it. It's so broken. Look at this. So, what's that? P7 or 6? He's starting bang on the corner. 7. No, it's P7, actually, I think. And we're just stuck here. We're going to be so far behind the leader here. Now, put charge control on just to be careful. Remember on cold tyres as well? So, it's amplified this rolling start. It's mad. It's absolutely mad. Now, we get a flash from behind from the Corvette driver. I'm thinking, uh, okay, uh, if you go for it, go for it. <laughs> um, but, seems as so, though, we leave room on the inside. And they're going to get that position for now. So, I knew it was going to be a fuel race. And I had this funny feeling inside my head that Gran Turismo are putting the pit times to the length of the pit. That's why Brand Hatch was shorter. And I had it in my head, so I decided, right, okay, let's just try and save some fuel, see if I can save enough. You've got to bear in mind that with eight laps, you're going to have to use only 12% a lap. So it's significant fuel saving here. Significant. And we'll talk about the time in the pits shortly. Anyway, we've got uh, Mope up ahead here then. And Mope goes a little bit too deep here. So we're now going to look on the inside. I'm on fuel map two again. I'm just trying to save fuel here to see if, if I can do it and get to the end of the race because I know it's going to be a fuel race. I had, the, I had it in my head. I was testing it. And you can see I'm short shifting. I'm trying all sorts here as we advance a bit further on. I decided in the end I can't save enough fuel as we look down the inside of the German who left the door wide open here. 
And they gave me space on the inside. I gave them space on the outside. Three we go up into P11. But look how far off the lead we are already. Now, Shelty did start on pole. About 15 seconds up in the distance. Um, and we've already come up to the finish driver then in another McLaren. So McLaren was top of the leaderboards when I entered the race this morning, which is why I chose McLaren. The RCZ, I was racing against the ghost of the McLaren. Perfectly fine. It's just a bit slower on the straights, the RCZ, but far better in the corners. Uh, I'm going to assume it's better on fuel. I don't know, though. I've not really tested it. Oh, but the, down the inside of the McLaren here, in towards the left-hander. That's job done nice and easy. Three we go. The McLaren is a fairly stable car, though. So if you do want to pick, pick something different from the RCZ, McLaren is a shout. However, I've been talking about the fuel for a while. Now, let's talk about this pit line as well. Not pit line, penalty line. There we go. That was a one and a half second penalty. He was one and a half seconds ahead of us. And it's dropping so fast because of that penalty line. So do not get a penalty at this circuit. Now, we're going to head up the hill where we just see a yellow flag in the distance. I don't know about track limits. Uh, I was just staying on the curb because that's my normal track limits. Yellow flag there. Shelty was 15 seconds ahead of us-ish. It's now dropped to here and also has, as you're about to see, a three-second penalty. So it must have hit a Barry R. Shelty's strategy has gone down the pan. Or has it? We will see. So, coming through this right-hander, we're going to try and catch up to Chelsea. I, I sort of guessed Chelsea was fuel-saving. We're about to find out. Trust me, Chelsea's fuel-saving. In towards the right-hander, we go then. Look at that TCR. Liverwood Mazda. It's beautiful. As we then head into the left then and accelerate down the hill. And if you listen... Do you hear that short shift there? And look how fast we go past. So I know Shelty's fuel saving here. Uh, Shelty has a brain. I know that. We've raced Shelty many times uh, as we continue on then. So we catch up then to Zalar 71. I'm assuming that's the year they were born. I'm not too sure. Uh, in towards the left we go. And you can see they're struggling a little bit. Uh, my problem with extreme tire wear, by the way, is the fact that if you are, let's just say, oversteerio and a less skilled driver to get down the inside here. Look how tight this is. My word, that was a good move and a half. I'll take those. If you're a bit of a less skilled driver and you're oversteering more, so maybe you're down in DRD, you will oversteer more than somebody in DRA+. You're going to suffer with more tire wear, significantly so. So it actually, the race becomes so much harder for a lower skilled driver than a higher skilled driver. It's really weird how it works, but... Yeah, it, I guess it's one of those. What's your thoughts on extreme tire wear? Do let me know. As in the distance, we see Moses off there with a four-second penalty. Oh, my word. We look down the inside then because we're going so slowly. Uh, and they come across there. And I don't think there was enough room there anyway. So <laughs> it's a good job we backed out a little bit here. They go a little bit too deep. So we're going to go down the inside then. Carry on through. Happy days. Now, if I were you, Moses, here, I'd have backed out of this rather than waste a bit of time here trying to get down the inside. It literally just costs you time. And it gained you nothing. Uh, it cost me a bit of time, but it cost you a lot more because you've got a four-second penalty coming up, which is going to be like seven or eight seconds. Anyway, at the end of the lap, we're going to come in the pits, of course. So it's around 22% of fuel a lap for the McLaren when going flat out. And look at the delay on this pit stop. Look at the delay. It took ages to get in there. Um, so roughly 31 seconds for the pit stop, I worked out. Roughly, um, i say it's, it's all based on the distance to the leader. Now, we advance a bit further on here where the couple of the lead packs waited a lap. So, I think the RCC had a tiny bit better on fuel. Um, and we see a penalty there once again. So, gaining another position. And I didn't change tyres. I didn't explain that. And I did that to catch up to this group. You can not change tyres here. So, there's a bit of a strategy call there for you. If you want to change tyres, change tyres. If you don't, you just got to manage the tyres a little bit. Now, I do manage them fairly okay in this race in the grand scheme of it. And you can do it, as I say. It's all about stability of a car. If you're in the Audi R8, you are changing tyres. McLaren is fine. The RCZ, probably fine as well. Remember, Shelty is going for the strategy. Oh, lap guide. I forgot I need to do one of these. Uh, turn one, the 100 meter board. Just after that 100 meter board is when you're going to brake for turn one. And it's first gear. You want to clip the inside. Be careful on throttle. You will get a little bit of oversteer in some cars. And then full throttle. Yeah, Shelty is no stopping this. And look how far in the lead Shelty still is. Even after that what, 20 plus second issue that he had? Anyway, we're going to advance up the hill then. Oh, Rouge, so cut left. The right, you do not have to lift here at all. Uh, I lift a little bit because I was going to run a little bit too deep, but I was in understeer, dirty air area. Uh, on your own, it's just flat out. It's nice and easy. And the McLaren's actually really easy to catch as well if you lo do lose it there. Thomas goes defensive here, so we go towards the left-hand side. Our brake marker for this, start the curb. It's our usual brake markers here for Spa. 
Um, so start the curb there. You're going to brake. Third gear, you want to click the right. Avoid the uh, bollards, the bouncy bollards, because they can untest your car. Uh, obviously, we're just giving a bit of room there for the Peugeot RCZ. So through the left we go, and then you want to get right. Just be careful. Slight lift, click the curb, then full throttle. Be careful of the slippy stuff on the left-hand side as we head down the hill then. Again, the curb is your brake marker. This time, you're braking just before it. Downhill braking, remember? So if you brake even remotely slightly later, it's amplified. Um, because you're going downhill and keep it tight here. Keep it tight, keep it tight, keep it tight and then accelerate through the corner. Just be careful of any oversteer. Now you're braking hard-ish and then you're turning before that flag indicator on the right hand side. That is always my marker here. Basically, if you turn just before that, you should then clip the curb and then accelerate through the corner and you should be fine. Like so, a little bit of oversteer, but that's the tire wear. Just creeping in a tiny bit as we head down to Puon then. So on the right side, we have a flag marker once again. You're braking just before this. Fourth gear in the McLaren. And basically, you want to clip the first part of the curb, go out, and then come back in, but not clip the second part. Just get close to it. Now we clip it just a tiny bit there, go out, and then we come back in. And look at that, we just avoid it. Happy days. That's exactly how you do that corner. Heading towards the right-hander here then. I'm using the curb. Some people use the gantry we've just passed, but I use the curb more than the gantry. Uh, I really do. So in towards this brake zone, just before the curb, hit the brakes. And you want to keep this kind of tight so you get a better run on the second part. So you, I did that slightly wrong. I really should be a bit further to the right so then get a good run through the left. Be careful next to it. That's very slippy on the right hand side. Now this corner, you brake even earlier than normal in terms of the curb brake marker. You notice here, there's a good, what, 20 meters before the curb and brake him. If you brake too late here, you're going to cost yourself tons of time. So it's better to brake early and then accelerate through the corner. Now, this second right-hander, if you get it right, you can do it flat. We have to lift there because we get it slightly wrong, but we continue on through all the same. And I think we're three temps up then. It's definitely not three temps at the line, um, but now it's flat out all the way to the chicane. Blanchimon is flat. You can do it flat behind somebody as well. You just got to get it right. So on the inside there, I oh, lift. I shouldn't have lifted there. You don't need to lift. I'm telling you the truth. In towards the braking zone here then. 150 meter board just after the 150 meter board is really the braking. It depends on tire wear as well. Obviously, towards the end of the race, it's normally the 150 meter board. And I don't know if I, I hit the apex. No, I just missed it there. It was just after when I broke. But with tire wear, that's a tiny bit too late. With, with fresh tires, it's easily the 150 meter board just after it. Um, and we advance towards the last lap there as well. Sneaky little transition. And we run out of fuel on the line. But look at that. Shelty in the lead. Wins by five seconds. Even though Shelty lost a good 20 seconds in advance. There's probably 18 minute races in there under that 19 minute mark. Well played to Shelty. That is a very, very, very good effort. Um, but it's a fuel race. It is a fuel race. Because 31 seconds, you are going to need to lose over 4 seconds a lap to lose out. Which is a lot to lose at Spa. It really is. So, hit that Mazda. Try your hand at fuel saving. It's a really good week to really practice and get used to it. Because I know some people struggle with my brand's hatch one. That's it for this week, folks. I do hope you've enjoyed this video. A shout out to everybody I raced today, especially our driver of the week there, Tom from Race A. My logo's there if you want to subscribe. Two videos there to check out if you want to check out any more content on the channel and do give it a like on the way out. Thank you once again. Have a good week of racing and hope to see you in another video live stream very soon.